Some of you may remember the bench that I built out of the bed. This is the footboard and the headboard. This is an old tabletop here that's cut in half and it's going to be repurposed and be the bench on this one. It's 17 inches across. Most chairs and benches are gonna be 16 to 17 inches deep. That's pretty comfortable for most people to sit in. So we're just gonna leave it right at that. So to get the depth that I want on these, I'm gonna measure from this corner here 16 inches out. That way I have the lip of that seat sitting out about an inch from the front of this and it'll make a nice little detail on the front. I'm gonna be using my combination square. This one's a 16 inch combination square. And then I've got my drywall T-square that I mostly use for getting the end cuts on tables straight. So I'm just gonna line that up right there and put a 16 inch mark. So that's where I'm gonna cut that. Then to transfer that mark over so that I'm square over here, put a little tick. Now I'm going to mark the other side just like that, and then these will be the sides of the bench. Alright, I've got my lines on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and cut those with my skill saw, and then I'll be ready to start assembly. Alright, one side off. Now that those are cut off, you can kind of see how this is going to come together here. I'm just going to take a measurement right here so that I can see where I need to put my countersink holes in the back. So 29 inches on this and 10 should be perfect. When you don't have six hands, use a clamp. All right. Look at that, it's already looking like a cool bench. So right now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna get a two by four and just span it across the back, attach it here and here, and in between those legs, that'll give us some more forward support. Then I'll run another two by four from here across the back of this, and then I'm gonna make a little skirt that kind of goes in the front underneath the seat. Now I'm just gonna attach this support brace in the back. I'm just toenailing it in for now. This is where things get tricky and I need those six hands. Those supports there are coming across to the back. I'm just gonna attach a screw down in there going forward and that'll make that pretty stable. I'm gonna measure up to 16 and a half inches right here. And that's where my seat is gonna rest on. Most chair seats are right at 17 to, 7 to 18 inches. That tabletop that I'm gonna use is about an inch in thickness. So that'll put me right at 17 and a half on my height for the bench top when I'm done. I'm gonna use my quick clamp to hold this side while I screw the other side in. I'm gonna add one more board back here, and it doesn't need to be full width. This is just to support the back seat, and that's marked as 16 and a half inches so that it matches the front. Now comes the fun part. You gotta figure out how to trace this accurately and drop it down in there so that it sits and it, it follows all those contours and wraps around just right. <laughs> I'm gonna start by getting the rough shape. I'm just gonna take my pencil here, push this to the back as far as I can. 
and then I'm using the pencil just kind of straight up to get the curve I need. And I want to go a little big, so I'll cut on the outside of this line just to be sure on the first on the first pass. If you've got a better way to do this, let me know because tracing these cutouts here and getting it to fit with that support brace right there is going to be pretty fun. All right, so you can see my line here kind of tracing around and then it takes a little jump. So I'm gonna get this nice and dark so I can see it good. And then this is right here in the front where that pokes out in the front there and protrudes out. Now in the back on the bottom there, there's gonna be a cutout. So I need to account for that and come out probably about half an inch on each side. So I'm just gonna eyeball it on that part there. Maybe go a half an inch all the way around. And then once I get closer, once I got my basic shape, I'll cut out the exact spots that I need and start cutting those notches out as well. You just, you always want to go a little bigger. That way you can trim down more later and fit it in nice and neat. Now that I've got the basic shape cut out, I'm gonna use the combination square to go in here and figure out the depth of this inset right there. Looks like it's right about five eighths. Same on that one. I'm just gonna go in here and notch that square out on each side. I'm gonna do it over on that other side as well. And then that'll be just about right for my insert there. Okay, so this is seven and a quarter inches here from the back of this to the front of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna measure from the back and start my first little notch and I already know that that's five eighths inches deep to here. So I'll notch that out right there. The front of that is at nine and a quarter. So it's basically two, well, basically it's not basically, it is two inches. So I need to cut from here over and I need to notch that out right there. I feel like the top is pretty close. I haven't fitted in there just because sometimes I, when I fit them in, they don't like to come back out. So if I'm close, I wanna make sure that it's all right and sanded and stained before I drop it down in. All right, I've got Minwax Stain in Weathered Oak. It's number 270. And that's pretty much what I've got. I'm out of all my dark stains, the Jacobian and Dark Walnut. I'm out of those. So we're going Weathered Oak. That's looking kind of yellowish, which I don't want. All right, I found some classic gray. It's just got a little bit in the bottom, but I think it's enough. The weathered oak is still wet on here, so I'm just gonna put this over the top and hope it takes this stain so we can get a little darker than it is. Because I, I wanted it to be more gray than that. Hopefully there's enough. Normally I don't like to do two part projects, but there's still quite a bit left to do. You guys can see the basic shape of it forming up. 
I've got this top. There's a couple little pieces I've got to fit in, but I want to paint this first before I fit it in. That way when it drops in, it's down there because this little lip here is making it, I test fitted it once, it's real close, but that lip is making it so I can't get it back out very easily. I almost had to take the thing apart to get it back out. So part two will be out tomorrow. The whole thing will be done so you can watch both parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this build portion up and then part two will be Jamie and I finishing it. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, hit that notifications bell so that you get the notifications when the second part comes out and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.